How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group Mike here. Today it is gorgeous here. We finally got a great weather in the state of Georgia and behind me is the new series G7. Stay tuned, we're gonna check out the SR20 G7. If you've been following, you know we featured the new G7 on the channel recently, but I actually didn't get up close and personal with one until today. So you're looking at this series, it looks very similar. Actually, it is the same plane for the last 10, 20 years, but what's different is what you get in the interior, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, also, I should state again that this is an SR20, not the 22, but you can't mistake it because again, the 20 and the 22 share exactly the same body frame, right? So let me go around in here. You know, Sirius is notorious for commercializing the parachute system. And just like you have in the SR20, I mean, sorry, the SR22, the SR20s are also well equipped with the, uh, with the ballistic parachute. And this plane, it's, the ramp appeal is, it's massive. It's massive compared to other single engine or single pistons that you see uh, at the airport. And what I've always loved about Cirrus is, man, this Golden Door is, they are, they just, they give a nice appeal to the airplane, but more so, they're also very, very practical. If I go here, right, compared to other planes in the same category, the same class, the sheer size of this opening allows the average American or bigger than average American to be able to get into that cabin which is where Cirrus really wins. It's that cabin. That's a big, big cabin for a small single engine airplane. But before we go in there, I do want to talk about the power plant because this is the exact thing that sets this airplane apart from the SR-22. So the Cirrus SR-20 uses a Lycoming 390, IO 390. It is still a high performance aircraft because you have 215 horsepower, but the SR-22 does have a bigger engine, a Continental engine. But this is a 215 horsepower engine, and we'll talk about the numbers, the performance numbers, a little later. But I'm too excited to show you this interior. But before I do that, I mean, check these out. These little details, they put a smile on my face. Okay, all LEDs. All right. Uh, speaking of LEDs, one thing you also don't get in the SR20 compared to the SR22 is Fiki. So practically you can't have Fiki on. I haven't seen it yet. Maybe there is one, but no SR22 generally have de-icing uh, equipment on board. That you would get with SR22, which is one of the main reasons why folks generally go for the SR22 to the 20. But today, I'm actually here to make a case that you don't need to spend $300,000 more to get the bigger engine. You can do so much more with this airplane and actually transition properly into the Vision Jet in the SR20. But let's go inside. So to get in the airplane, you have a nice bulky step up here. You've got a handle right here. So step up, pull yourself up get on the wings and voila this is what sets the generation 7 apart let me get a better wide view boom there we go look at this all glass baby but more importantly is this perspective touch so the old cabin or the old cockpit of this aircraft you have a big panel here with buttons on it and some pilots may still prefer that but what you have now all touch screen so you've got still your large primary and secondary display and then now it's all touch screen in here and guys <laughs> just to let you know how brand new this airplane is it smells like a brand new airplane which this is very very brand new but again what's impressive about the Cirrus SR series is this cabin width. You've got 50 inches and plenty, plenty of leg room, plenty, plenty of headroom as well, and room in the back. And of course, all the way back, you've got your baggage area. You see here, 
decent legroom there. I'm not sure how far back, excuse me, how far back this uh, seats are. But let me get inside and I'll show you some more. But and before I do, this is new. OK, now the side sticks themselves are not new, but just this. All of this is new, including with that. Let's get in. So to get in the series, practically put yourself in again. Little details, right? You've got a nice handle here. You can use that to pull yourself in. And I'll get in right now and turn the cameras around. Here we are, guys, in the new SR22 G7. Uh, this is practically, and I'm saying that not just as a fanboy or anything, but this is one of the easiest airplanes to get into, right? And I think when you look at Cirrus compared to any other aircraft, I believe these are some of the things that were thought about in the design of the aircraft is how easy it will be to get in and out, right? For older pilots, I can say this for a fact, older pilots generally prefer high wing airplanes because it's easy to just tuck your butt in to get in and out compared to low wing. But with the Cirrus one, you get this big opening here and then you have such a crazy amount of space, right? Both in the cabin, but also with your leg room. Let me see if I can get it for you, right? I mean, I have legs for days and I'm not even touching the rudders right now. So you have so much room right here which again, the average American should fit in here perfectly, but more importantly, if you're above average, if you're taller than average, 6'4", right? Or if you're wider than average, you will fit just fine in this airplane. But of course, uh, with the leg room, you also have this, which I thought, I've always thought that this was clever because again, for example, in a stick and rudder plane, for me, I'm used to having a stick in the middle, both in the airplane that I trained in and the airplane that I ended up owning as a personal airplane, you have your stick here. So you kind of have kind of have to dance with your foot. But guess what? In a Cirrus, no nothing. All of this is nice clearance for you. And then you've got a nice hand stick. And I'll show you guys because we're going to go up in this and I'll let you know how it flies. But I think these little details uh, does say a lot about how much attention went to the design of the airplane. And as you know, all Cirrus aircraft or Cirrus SR-20, 22, they all equipped with the parachute. And generally speaking, right here, right? So in many cases, every other plane that's come after Cirrus with the parachute, they generally have it in front of you. Uh, but this is not bad, having it right here within reach. If you get yourself in trouble and you can, you have the option to pull this baby. Okay, so, but let me get back to the cockpit here. So if you recall, when I covered the G7 initially, I went through some of the really cool features in this new G7. And it's really nice to actually sit in front of it. You know, so for example, I mentioned this push to start, which I think is very neat. So you don't really need a key to turn uh, in these new G7, you see engine start, you still have to use the switch to get your mags in because you, you do have a older uh, conventional engine that's flying you, but to be able to match this up with a Lycoming 390, I think is, is very nice. And one thing that's also set Sirius apart, both in the 20 and the 22, is this right here. This is luxury item in a piston. <laughs> Right, this is luxury item. Uh, so all SR20s, uh, particularly the G7, you have air conditioning. So on hot days, hot summer days, those vents will blow some cool air to you. As I mentioned, you don't have the ice and equipment on, in the 20s. So normally you have, see even it says it right here, you'd have the switch here, but you don't have that. Um, again, you do have your primary and secondary display, nice large screens. And believe it or not, when you look at this deck, this cockpit, it's very identical to the Vision Jet, which I believe is a serious goal with this plane, is they want this to be a nice training platform to build time, and then you can transition out either to the 22, but with this new G7, you can easily transition even from the SR20 into a Vision Jet. Right. So this is built really after the Vision Jet with the G3000, the Garmin G3000. And then you have your perspective touch here, obviously autopilot here. And 
Another cool feature with the Cirrus, one lever. Something again you would get used to once you get into turbines is you don't have a prop lever, you just use your power. And that's one of the things that makes this airplane easy to fly. As far as practicality, look, again, tons of room, your rudder pedals nicely there, you've got your fire extinguisher tucked away. But look, cubby, like, you don't get this in every plane. <laughs> You don't get these little detailed things in every plane. And that's because Cirrus really built the SR series as a cross-country airplane. So they want you to have, like, just little things, man. You, you've got charges here, right? Little cubby spaces. Your fuel selector is here. But if you go right here, you've got some nice uh, tucked away middle console where you can store things. Let me get my camera back in view. Um, so it's very, very neat. And then up here... You've got your visors. Guess what? Built in, right? You don't have to go purchase something off of Amazon. You have authentic one already built in. Little details like this, uh, the company has, has thought about. Okay. But now let me step out and share some of the numbers that could be a deal maker or a deal breaker for this plane. Back outside with the Cirrus SR20 G7. Something I forgot to mention earlier is you get this large baggage compartment i'm not sure if it's open boom even that is very very easy to open see just a click or push of a button you have this nice area and you can see the opening is large enough that you can literally just shove in your standard size suitcase in here and your baggage area is it's very nice very nice guys you gotta you gotta appreciate this little things man like soft touches right all carpeted all soft touches all around even in the baggage area uh, those are some of the details that i love and look you've got even a nice cubby here uh, you get these with the sr20 or the 22 but let's talk some numbers okay let's talk some numbers so you're in the market for either a personal aircraft or what I would call a luxury trainer, because that's what this is. This is not your entry level in terms of price, um, but it is a Cirrus after all. Before I share the price, so I mentioned that you have a 215 horsepower engine. Your typical cruise speed with this airplane is around 150 knots, okay? You're cruising at 150 knots at 6,500 feet, or you can go up to 8,000 or 9,500. And at that, you're burning roughly 12 gallons of fuel per hour. And the useful load on this plane is about 1,000 pounds. Now, once you fill up the tanks, you're down to close to 700, which is very, very good, right? So you've got 56 gallons total. And this is also one of the things that sets apart the 20, the SR20 from the SR22, because you have smaller tanks with the SR20. So if you want to go really far, you opt for the SR22, but guys, I'm telling you, generally speaking, for those who buy SR22, you can probably do more with this airplane and spend a lot less. So now let's talk about the price. To get all this wonderful goodies with the Cirrus SR20, you're looking at 660 to 670 thousand dollars, brand new. Now. If you don't necessarily need to buy a brand new airplane, these planes in still top-notch shape, you can get even the G5, G6, but I think the best bank for the buck for the SR series is the G3, because that's when Cirrus changed their avionics from Avondon to Garmin. So if you opt in for the G3, man, there's a lot of really nice deals out right now with the SR20. And again, you've got yourself a nice luxury airplane that will cruise at 150 knots. You have a parachute on board, and this can be a four-seater, trust me, meaning you can actually fill up the tanks and put four adults in there, or if you have children, great to fly a family of four because you've got at least 600 pounds of payload uh, with this aircraft, okay? But again, if you have 600 and some change in the bank account, you can get you a brand new Cirrus SR20 G7. And that is my spiel for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time, make sure you check out other videos of Mojo Grip. 
and subscribe with the notification bell on. If you are looking to get your pilot's license, guess what? Just check the description of the video below or check us out at lookupflightacademy.com, which we're here now in Atlanta, Georgia. As a matter of fact, our hangar is going to be right there. So whenever you come in, we'll greet you right there and the runway will be right there for you to get your training and start your journey on becoming a pilot. So if you're looking to get your pilot's license or you want to be a career pilot, make sure you check out our program at lookupflightacademy.com. One last thing I will say, you can see what I have on. This is the new line called Alpha Pop. I've actually been working on this for a while now. It's technically not launched yet, but I really wanna launch it for Father's Day because I'm a daddy of two. I love my little girls. And I think dads are underrated most times. So this shirt is to make you feel like you're doing something great. Anyway, if you love to support the channel, make sure you leave. Just check the link in the description below and pick up an Alpha Papa shirt, either for yourself or for your dad. All right, I will catch you all on the next video. Peace.